So the DJI Mavic 3 was originally launched without all the features ready to go. And they just updated the drone with all these added features that make it, well, a complete drone. And there's a few things that I've been waiting for personally that I'm super excited about, and we're gonna test it out in this video. One of those is active track, but the ability to shoot D-log, and also the ability to shoot on a 2X zoom using the active track. And this gives you just a lot more creative flexibility because until now, you had to shoot in the normal mode, and the normal mode's great, but when you're shooting in D-log, it just gives you so much more flexibility in the color grade. I'll also show you a few other features that DJI has updated, but first, let's, uh, Let's go for a little ride on the mountain bike and let's do some tracking. You'll see right away that one of the big additions is color assist. So when you're filming in D-Log, you can actually see an overlay that has more of a standard color look. So this makes it much easier to use when you're flying so you're not looking at a log image. But this is just something that you're seeing on the monitor so you're actually getting the log image recorded. And this for me is a huge addition because a lot of times I'm out in bright sunlight and it's really hard to see the screen, especially when you're looking at a log image. So having the color assist just makes everything pop so you have contrast and saturation and you can see exactly what you're doing when you're out flying, but then you still have that log footage that you can use for the edit later on. Now with tracking, you have the ability to punch in two times. Now this is doing a digital crop. So it's using the bottom camera to do all of the tracking. If you put it in explore mode, you still don't have the option to do tracking. So when you put it in the two times zoom, the image is not as clear and it's because of this digital crop. You can see when I put these two images side by side, the one on the left is the two times zoom in camera and the one on the right is a two times crop that I did in my editing software. Now looking at these side by side, I don't see a massive difference between the two. The two times zoom does look more clear and that's because you're recording this crop in at 4K. However, it is still just a digital zoom on the image. Now, one thing I'm noticing when I'm looking back at this footage is that it is kind of jerky with this active track. You can definitely find moments where it's super smooth, but as you can see here, when I'm rotating around myself, just in this one spot, the camera seems to jerk back and forth. And overall, using active track, it's not always perfect, but when I'm using the two times zoom, you do see more of this jerky motion. And now another huge welcome to update is the way that they've modified the menu settings. So if you wanna change anything while you're flying, well in the pro mode, if you click on any of the icons in the lower right hand corner, it now brings up these two additional menus. On these menus, you have the option to do auto or manual for any of your exposure settings, but then also you can change it from D-log to normal and you can change your white balance. So it just gives you everything that you need in a super simple pop-up menu. So one of the big additions is quick shots, which are basically these easy ways to get creative looking shots. And there's a few of them that have been added. So let's just look at how these look in this one location so you can see the difference between all of the different quick shots. Now quick shots are a great way to get these shots that have lots of motion and it just does it all automatically. The limitations are that you're stuck in the normal color settings. So you can't use the log color when you're flying with these different modes. And also you're limited to 4K 30 frames per second or 1080p 30 frames per second. So you don't have a whole lot of options when it comes to color and frame rate and resolution. Now the quick shots, you have the droney, the rocket, the circle, the helix, the boomerang, and the asteroid. And when you do the asteroid, that one is only available in 1080p. And that's because of the way that it uses photos and videos together. Now these are super simple to use. So you just choose the motion that you want. You tap on the screen to select your subject or you draw a box and then you just click go. It's as simple as that. So for photography, they've added panorama mode, and this basically stitches together a bunch of photos to be able to give you this big panoramic view. 
And so you can see I'm up here on this mountaintop and this is the panoramic that I was able to make out of these photos. And so it's not only a wider field of view, but it's also a super high resolution because it's stitching all the photos together. So with this update, did the active track improve? I think overall the D-Log and Color Assist are nice improvements. However, I would like to see more features added to the active track. Being able to use the 5.1K would be a huge advantage. And also the ability to use the Explore mode would be really cool. That way you could get tracking with that long lens at a 7X zoom. The other things that I wanna see are less jerky movements when tracking. Maybe something like an added smooth mode that doesn't respond as fast to little movements could solve this. But overall, this update gives you a lot more creative control over your image. And now the Mavic 3 has all the features that were promised at the initial launch of the drone. Now there is a few other things they've added with this update. I'll include a full list down below in the description. And next, I highly suggest you check out this video right here. It goes through some different ways on how you can stop making boring drone videos. I'll see you on the next one.